Hey, are you tired of dry, boring tasting stir fried chicken? Do you love Chinese takeout but worry about the oil and hate the thick cornstarch? Hi, my name is Chiu Smith. Welcome to I Heart Umami Paleo Cooking Channel. In this video, I'll show you how to make your satay chicken tender and juicy without the junk. And as always, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below. I will be sharing new Asian-inspired paleo recipes here every Thursday. So without further ado, let's make my velvet cashew chicken. Okay, so I have about one and a half pound of chicken breast here. And you can see I slice them to very thin. You know, think of um, more like a sashimi, you know. And then we're going to add one egg white. Slightly whisk, beat the egg a little bit. Don't overbeat it. And pour it over. Usually in Chinese restaurants, they add cornstarch and then add a bunch of it, almost like, you know, breaded flour. So this is about three quarters of a tablespoon of arrowroot powder. You can also use a sweet potato powder. What this arrowroot powder does is that it will help us actually uh, form a very thin shield um, to coat the, the chicken breast. So it will help us to maintain um, the juicy texture inside. And then and we're going to um, season our chicken with about a half teaspoon of sea salt and also a dash of white pepper. And then you're just going to, you know, gently mix them a little bit. I'm going to seal them and put it back to the fridge and then let them refrigerate about 20 to 30 minutes. And then in the meantime, we're going to chop up some vegetables and our aromatics. So after 30 minutes, we marinate the chicken in the fridge. And now you can see in front of me, I have a pot of boiling water here. And what we're gonna do actually, instead of like a lot of Chinese restaurants, they coated the chicken with starch, cornstarch, and then they fry them. And that's the reason, you know, you, your chicken tastes very tender and juicy. Uh, but I'm gonna show you a healthier version to do that. And so the same thing, we use actually just a tiny bit of arrowroot starch. Uh, starch powder from the previous step and now I'm going to turn the water down to almost like shimmering okay after it's boiling and I'm going to add just about one tablespoon of oil here and then I am going to add the chicken in and so what we're gonna do is we're going to poach the chicken actually. So we're not cook them completely through, okay? Just gently poach them a little bit and see, use a wooden spoon or me use chopsticks and kind of just separate the chicken pieces a little bit. Just, you know, prevent them from sticking to each other. So the whole process is probably for one and a half pound of a chicken probably will take you about one minute or so. And as soon as you start seeing the chicken pieces starting opaque, um, and that's the right time to um, scoop them out, and then uh, you can use uh, like a pasta drainer to drain the chicken, okay? Because you don't want to take the water, right? You just want the chicken pieces, so they don't want to stir fry. And if you don't have a pasta drainer, or me, because I want to show you right in front of um, the camera here, I'm just going to use a little strainer and then strain it. And then you want to make sure, you know, no water before you put it into the dish, okay? Drench them a little bit. It's gonna turn opaque. They are not cooked through yet, so don't eat them, okay? There are more delicious steps coming up very, very quick. And you know what? After you learn this technique, so simple, right? You will never stir fry chicken breast the same again because it's just transformational. Your family is going to be so surprised. What did you do to the stir fried chicken breast this time? Why is it so tender, not dry? And then you can tell them this very, very simple technique. Okay, I'm just going to keep doing this and then, you know, scoop, scoop them out and then, set, and then I'm gonna set them aside, let them cool down a little bit and then we can move on to the next step. So now we've prepared the chicken. They are halfway down there, getting velvety for us. 
Let's move on to prepare some vegetables. So I have heated about one and a half tablespoon of coconut oil here and it's pretty hot. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit so I don't burn my vegetables. And I chop one yellow onion. Ooh. <laughs> Gonna quickly stir fry the onion a little bit. I don't want it to become too um, soft uh, because it will get uh, very watery before I even add in the sauce. So I'm just gonna quickly stir fry a little bit under a pretty high heat. Actually, you can hear the loud sizzling sound, right? And then I have a bell pepper here. And also, I happen to find some uh, shishito pepper. I really, really love them. They are a little bit crunchier than uh, green bell pepper. But if you can find them, you can absolutely just use red bell pepper and also green bell pepper. And just quickly stir fry them under pretty high heat, okay? You want to hear the sizzling sound. And then sprinkle a little bit of salt, sea salt, to bring out the sweetness of the onion and also the bell peppers and also mashed potato pepper. And if you want to find out the exact measurements, if you make you feel more comfortable with, with these measurements, uh, I will put the link right down below and you can go to my website. I have designed a very, very beautiful uh, recipe here for you to print out and you can save it with you, maybe with your recipe cookbook. And just a small dash of white pepper. So you're just gonna keep stir frying it and then until you see the onion slightly turn translucent and that's done. Not sure about your salt quantity, you can taste them a little bit, okay? They are vegetables, so you can eat them raw, it's fine. And, and if you do it a few times, you will know exactly your, how much salt you would like to put in for your own personal preference. Okay, I think it's just about right. The onions are turning a little bit more translucent and my green and red bell pepper are still in vibrant color. I don't want to overcook them. I want them to be a little bit crunchy and later on match with my velvety chicken. It's gonna be a perfect mouthfeel. So I'm just gonna set them aside, let them cool a little bit. Now come to the main start of the dish. Remember our poached uh, velvet chicken? We're gonna finish them. And I'm going to add a few more spices. So I have a chopped garlic here and chopped fresh ginger. And also one to one and a half tablespoon of uh, harissa paste. That's completely paleo and also wholesale friendly. And if you're curious about uh, which brand I use, um, I'm not affiliated with all, any of these markets. Um, I will actually also post them down below on my website as well. Okay, I found mine on Whole Foods. And it's my first time finding them and I'm hoping you can also find them in your local grocery store or on Amazon. So now, use the same pan to heat about another one tablespoon of coconut oil. Coconut oil is good for high heat and also for Asian cooking. It is really good. And so I'm just going to add them in. Again, my, temp my satay pan temperature is pretty high, so you can hear the sizzling sound. This is one great thing about Asian food. Uh, stir fry is just such a great way to make easy weeknight meal everything instantly so tasty and flavorful and we're gonna add a small pinch of salt just to intensify the aroma and the flavor and if you feel like you don't hear enough sizzling sound you know what like me right now I'm gonna turn it up a little bit okay good awesome so you're gonna keep stirring it scooping it and maybe about 10 seconds you should smell a beautiful aroma from the chili paste and also from the garlic and ginger. Uh, normally when Chinese restaurant, you know, Chinese people do uh, cashew chicken, um, they will use uh, black bean paste or chili paste like or sriracha. Uh, but if you read the ingredient label, you will know uh, there's a lot of cornstarch in there. You don't want that. And after that, you want to add in our water boiled um, velvet chicken. Let me turn the temperature down a little bit. The reason I didn't completely dump them in is because uh, the bottom of the tray, there's still some water in there because we um, poached the chicken previously. So I don't want the water to dilute my uh, aromatic profile. I'm gonna stir fry them to cold 
the harissa chili paste and also the rest of um, of our garlic and ginger just hold the chicken you know evenly we're gonna stir fry the chicken probably about another one minute before we're adding our uh, stir fry sauce combo so after about one minute i'm gonna add my stir fry sauce combo i have about two tablespoons of coconut aminos here I also have about, I think, one to one and a half tablespoon of rebel fish sauce. And you're just gonna keep stir frying the chicken, and this sauce will help the chicken, you know, make them even more uh, savory and um, juicy, and more flavorful. And we're just gonna continue doing this until your chicken is completely cooked through, okay? And then that's the time you know your chicken is done. And this is all completely under pretty high heat, I would say for medium and medium to high heat. And see the reason I, you know, make sure you drench the chicken, right? Even after you drench them, it's sometimes, you know, after a while, you still have some water content in the tray. So you want to make sure there's no water in there, otherwise it, it will dilute the rest of the flavor of your sauce. And by the way, if you are interested to learn more about how to make an eating paleo uh, more easily fit into your life um, and how to make a delicious and healthy Asian-inspired paleo food, I have an uh, online cooking school. It's called I Have Mommy Paleo Cooking School, and that teaches you just exactly how to do that. Um, so if you're interested to learn more about it, I put a link right here and also down below. Um, enter your first name when you come to my website and also your email address. I will send you more information about my course. All right, so when the chicken is cooked through, the last thing you want to do is to add some raw cashew. And the reason I don't want to stir fry cashew very, very early is because, you know, uh, the raw nuts, you don't actually want to overheat them, okay? So um, you want to do that at the last step. It's actually better for you. And all you want to do is just, you know what, uh, we have some sauce remaining in the pan and it was the beautiful chicken. Just, you know, gently give them a quick stir for like an additional, I don't know, maybe between 10 and 30 seconds. Um, and then very, very quickly, chicken is done. The sauce is cooked over um, the raw cashew nuts. And we're gonna just turn the heat off. And then we're going to eat very quick, right? I told you. So now, final step, what is that? Let's eat. So let's pour the chicken with our cashew over the vegetable. Can you guess why I saute them separately instead of, you know, doing them at once in the same pan? Because, you know, we're adding the, um, the sauce, right, without using any cornstarch. So therefore, the coconut aminos and the, also the fish sauce, you know, they are just liquid, so it will take a longer time to get thickened. So, um, you know, normally people will just use starch and then it will just get the sauce thickened very quickly so you can maintain if you have happen to have vegetables in a saute pan the vegetable will just won't get cooked too long um, term mushy but since we're not using any starch so it's a good way to to separate um, the vegetable saute process from the meat in this case so now we pour the sauce the chicken over with our crispy saute uh, bell pepper, shishito pepper, and also uh, our still, you know, sweet but also crunchy uh, yellow onion. Look at that. They look gorgeous, glorious, right? Awesome. So uh, one little final tip here. This is just to reward those people who actually watch through the end of my teaching course here. Is that, um, you know, I made a few times of this chicken. Sometimes, you know, it depends on the, the chicken, you know, sometimes it has some water in there. Maybe you accidentally, um, when you, after you poach a chicken, when you dump them in, you know, it contains more water than you would have liked. So what happened is that if uh, after you saute the chicken and then you feel like, you know, after you're adding your sauce as well, you feel like, wow, there's still a lot of water in there. Your chicken is already cooked through. So what do you do? What you can do is you can scoop out the chicken without the liquid, okay? Try to scoop it out as much as you can and then set the chicken aside and then uh, just let the liquid sit in the pan over high heat. Stir them a little bit, just like when you make gravy, but without adding any starch okay just for under high heat maybe for another 
two minutes or, or you know two and a half minutes until you desire consistency and then that's a better way of um, you know if you happen to have more liquid in your satay pan but uh, if you actually follow the technique correctly you know we uh, lightly coated the, the chicken with arrowroot uh, powder and then we uh, poach them and drain them correctly uh, that should remove a lot of water content inside of the chicken okay so final step here they look so good and I'm going to eat and it's way 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 much better than any takeout Chinese food you know I make a huge batch so that means it's gonna be for my dinner tonight and then maybe also for lunch tomorrow yeah okay mmm mm -hmm. Can you get the crunchy sound? And definitely, I'm gonna grab the chicken too. Grab the chicken. Mmm. Mmm. It's juicy. It's tender. It's velvety. And it just, what a nice contrast between our crunchy vegetables and then also our savory and smooth chicken. So, to download today's recipe, and also step-by-step -step instructions. Or if you want to learn more about my I How Mommy Asian Inspired Paleo Cooking School, I will put a link right here and also down below. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you learned something today with me in this short amount of time. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or email me at hello at iheartumami.com. I'll see you here again next Thursday. Thanks, bye.